uh, our friend is not speaking. Yeah, I'm going to continue. So Musa, uh, this group was created to gather all the information to help people who uh, apply for this program, okay? And every week we have this meeting, weekly meeting to bring all the updates and help each other. And this group is also to help people who have Hello? questions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mireille, Mireille. Yes. Tu as parlé. Oui, j'ai parlé. Je, je m'excuse, je vais mute mon téléphone là parce que je suis encore au travail et je viens de recevoir quelqu'un. Je m'excuse. Quand je vais parler, je vais, 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 vais vous écouter. D'accord, d'accord. Ok. So, uh, the, the, the goal of this group, like I said, is to help each other to uh, get the answer to this question. Because along the way, many people have a uh, uh, question. And uh, if you have those questions, yeah, you can ask me. But most of the time, the question that you are asking, those answers are in here because in the previous meeting, maybe someone asked the same question. For example, what's the what's the purpose of the money? How, what are the eligibility? Once I receive the first letter, what do I do? Once I receive the first letter, once I receive the second letter, what do I do? So each step of the way. I have a session on in this book where I explain, actually explain what to do if you are already starting the process. Now today's meeting is more is mostly about explaining what to do about the PPP when you have that money. And many people in this group already have the PPP. And many people are going to uh, listen to this live there. The PPP, the EIG is those two different programs. I think we know. And many people in this group also does not even apply for the EIG. And I have to them. So after this meeting, they are just going to contact me again. So we can apply for the EIG, right? But for today, we are specifically talking about the PPP, or, 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 or better yet, how to make it free. Because the PPP is given to you guys as a loan. It's all the conditional of the loan. All the conditional, the conditional loan, when you go to the bank to, you know, to get the financial information, proof of this, proof of that, this is what you have to provide to get the PPP. But once you receive it, there is a way, they even give you a term. It's a, it's a, it's a 16 month, 60 month term, 1%. But there is a way that to make that money free. And I have two videos where I actually start started explaining how to post money free. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a link of those two videos over here. The first step of making the money free is what? It's actually uh, trying to create a link, a pool of three things. When you receive the money, try to prove three things. The first thing is what? The first thing is that you have to have an evidence of the liability. They give you the money to help you with your business. Your business is something that you're doing. I mean, since last year, right? The evidence of your of the any liability. For example, if you pay rent, there should be an evidence of the liability of the rent. The evidence is what is, for example, the links and the link, uh, the rent agreement or the lease agreement or the payment or the invoice that you receive. I know some lender send actually send invoice to to enter, I mean to tenants every month or maybe five days before the, before the end of the month. They actually send them invoice. That's the evidence that you have to pay that money. So you have to be able to have a proof of the liability. The proof of the liability is the fact that you receive an invoice from your lender. If you have a, a garage, if you have a, 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 a beauty shop, there's a proof that you have to pay rent for that beauty shop. But that's the evidence of the liability. So the first thing is to prove the, the evidence of the liability. The second thing is to actually make a payment, right? To make a payment, any type of payment works whether it's a check or direct deposit or, or you know or wire transfer it's a proof of payment now the other thing is the exit of the money 
from where the money was deposited because if I'm talking about the Philippines. The money is instead is, is supposed to be used in your business, right? It's not supposed to be saved. If you want to save it, I'm telling that to you. I won't tell anywhere. If you want to save the money, whatever you have evidence of what I just said, I'm going to take one case, your loan. Remove the money, then put it in one place. Then they will see that the money left the place that it was before. Then you have an evidence of uh, to account for that amount. And I'm going to share with you here uh, an application, a template that, that I created for my customer to actually track all of those expenses because it's only when you track those expenses that they can be forgivable. Because when you track them, you know exactly how much was used. That can happen was uh, used uh, for allocated purpose. And then how much could be forgiven. If you don't do that, at the end of the period, it's called the, the, the public period, which is actually eight weeks or 24 weeks. And I'm, I'm advising people to use the eight period because it's easier to chart stuff during during eight weeks than to chart them during 24 weeks. 24 weeks or 24 weeks of And once if you don't track them, you'll be in trouble because you you use all the money. Yes, you use all the money. But when it comes to track what was allocated, what was actually supposed to be allocated, you won't be able to get those money for them because you didn't track them. Right? The first thing I repeat again is to have an evidence of your liability. If you have, for example, you have your your, your point B that you pay. First thing is the point that you receive from your from your uh, point from point or the invoice that they send to you. When they send you an invoice, it's an evidence that you have to pay that bill. Now, when you effectively pay the bill, the evidence is that there's somewhere whether is there's a trace because you need to, even though you pay cash, you receive some type of receipt. Even though you pay the money cash, you have to receive the receipt of the money that you have paid for your phone bill. If you pay by transfer by by debit card, that evidence is on your bank account. So. The bank account actually shows if or not the money exit your bank account, right? So this is the point I want to make here, and I made two videos to explain all of this. Two separate videos: the first step and the second step. So now, I already on this video, I was actually letting you know, guys, that what are eligible expenses to account into the ticket program. Again, I'm going to very quickly um, remind about the sales today. The first thing is yourself. You are your first employee, right? When you are working, you are your own person. You are your person. Even though you have to buy it, you are also your own employee because you don't pay yourself in for you. No, you don't pay yourself on the payroll. If you don't pay yourself on payroll, then you are automatically you are an employee. So how much do you pay yourself? That money is included in the money that you receive. There is a portion of that money that you should use. For the right? What do you do every week? The amount that the the the, the, um, the, the application or the template that I have created will show you. That template will show you how much you should deduct for yourself every week. Basically, maybe you don't know. People will ask, I'm not going to do the calculation every day or tell you they got robots. You see, they go to the they go to my robots. We actually they want to put the amount of money that you receive. The, the day that you receive the money. Right. It will tell you how much what is your payment in that money. Whether you receive two thousand or you receive seven thousand. Your weekly payment will depend on how much you receive the quarter. So once you do that, the first payment is that you pay yourself. So every week, you try, try to go to the doctor and more. That amount of money in the program. If you receive the money long time ago, then on the program that I'm going to give you, just go there and pick it up for each week. Put that amount. You have to calculate how much you would say that are actually uh, eligible 
right? For Isabel and Mars, if you use the money to pay to your son, because your son wants to pay for his wife, he doesn't doesn't come for him. If you take the money and I don't know what to do. Go and pay for the grocery store. It doesn't count. Unless you pay your family the money, then you use the money to pay for the grocery store. There's no such uh, expense for grocery store among all the list of expense that counts for the forgiveness. So as you have thought that I'm to share, to share my screen so I can show you a little bit what I'm talking about. Uh, Okay, this is what I was talking about, right? Over here, over here, what you guys have to do is that the money you receive, you're supposed to pay yourself, owner compensation, over here, you pay yourself with the money. Right here. If you are a company, the company I'm talking about is corporation. The corporation where you know, on the corporation, some people there are so many benefits. You know, wage benefit. The employee goes. Uh, you have the commission that you receive. You have sometimes uh, adverse. You have sick payment. You have insurance that is paid. For the company. If you have all of this, then account for that. But I'm assuming that people who are watching this now. I uh, just said to Brian, or you just have the business, or the most of not pay all of this. But if you pay all of that, put all the money there. We will actually tell you how much you pay for that. We take the template system, we will actually tell you how much you pay for each one. But I'm going to just focus on you, the owner of the business. And I will also talk about if you have employees, right? So now, if you are one of the business, assuming that you are a self-employed business, or you are LLC, you single member LLC, the amount that you put, these are the expenses. The first one is the payable cost. The payable cost is anything that you must to pay yourself or pay employees. The other thing that you can pay for is your mortgage interest. Your mortgage interest, whatever you pay as a mortgage interest, interest is, a fund, is, 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 is uh, an eligible uh, expense. You have, you are, when I say mortgage, it also comes for rent. Over here is also rent. If you don't own your facility because you rent, then your rent is a business expense, right? So this money can account for uh, mortgage interest, your rent your credit card payment interest, your electricity, your bill, your internet, your cable, your phone, your transportation. If you don't have a car, if you have a car then you have to, you know, to get from one point to the other point to for, for your business. So basically that was the point of this, uh, uh, this, this uh, forgiveness thing. The point is that we are a new thing that are mostly business related, right? Everything new. But if you are a self employer and you don't have any other office, or your home is also your office, what do you do in this case? Let me go on this sheet over here. If you are a self employer, what do you do? You have to have an estimate of the, the use of each expense in your business. For example, if you're a self-employer, you don't have an office. If you have an office, it's normal. Your rent office is 100% for your business, right? But if you have a house, that is also your business address, you have to specify what percentage of your rents of all your house, you use it for your business. What does that mean? It basically means you have your house, your house, house maybe uh, uh, five or six uh, rooms. How many rooms do you use for your business? If you have the house that has five rooms, you don't have five rooms, then you use two rooms for your business. You have a room, you have a computer in one of the The other room, you sit there, you do whatever you want to do for your house. You know, when you are home is your business, for example, this home is my business. That means I'm using this room to do on my computer to do business expense related or business anything that related to business. Whether it's the research or business or it's the chat or whatever it is, if I use this room, then this room becomes an expense on my business. That means if my room, my 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 uh, my, my apartment, my house has five homes. 
I'm using this one color of my everything in my house to come to business expense. Right? So basically, what does that mean? That is if you have you don't have a separate location for your business. If you have a separate location for your business, it's easy. You don't expense on that location. You just account for it. The electricity, the gas, the water, the internet, the cable, everything to that equation is just 100% uh, forgivable. It's 100% eligible to be forgiven. Whenever you spend money for that specific expense, that money accounts for forgiveness. And you have to record those money in this table. When you record those money, those expenses in this table, what will happen? It will just get that expense and bring it here and tell you how much you have already spent on the money that was given to you. So every time that you use the money, you plug them into this or you have used the money already because you used the money long time ago. The money was already used. Now, when did you use the money? What did you use the money? You have to choose the bit here when you use the money to employ the amount inside and it will actually collect and do the sum, do the summation of the money that you have used, and tell you how much of that money will be forgiven. When you reach as you reach hundred percent, that means all the money will be forgiven. That means if when we start the, the, the actual process, the actual application of forgiveness, you can put it there that yes, this is actually what I use, and this is what is left, because. If, because you use all the money, doesn't mean all the money will be forgivable. You actually have to allocate the expense of those money to the expense that are um, eligible. Let's put it that. If you take the money and go and buy, I don't know what to do, and use for any that's not here. Yes, because you don't have the money. But the money is not possible. Right? If you cannot state when you spend the money, the money will still not be forgivable. That's the point I want to stress here. That you have to trace your money. If you spend the money already, okay, when did you spend the money? When did you pay yourself? Over here, I'm paying myself. Let's say it's me. Five hundred uh, eight dollars every week, week one to week eight. At the end of those weeks, I can use how much did I do for myself. If I put it in the here. I have used 4,000, this is the total here. I have used 4,068 to pay myself out of the money. That was given to me. How much was the money? This is, this is the money here, 5,000. So I have used 5,000 to pay myself. That means all these 5,000, I can use it for whatever I want to use, right? You see how it's easy to do whatever you want to use the money? But you not just take the money from scratch into the account and go do what is not supposed to be done with the money. Pay yourself the money first, then take the money and do whatever you want to do that is not listed on this list. I don't know if everybody follow what I'm saying now. If somebody has a question here, you can ask before I continue. Does someone have a question? Hello? Back home, back home. Hello? I know many people are mute. You can unmute yourself to talk. Back home, did you, did you have a question for what you have said uh, up to this point? Uh, Musa, do you do you have a question up to this point? No, no. So you you get you get. You know, no, no, no. no. <laughs> okay. So the point I'm making here is that everybody should be able to have the money that you receive, make it free, and if you don't pay attention. And you want at the, the last day to go and tell the bank, oh, okay, I, 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 I heard that this money will make you free. You, you, won't, you won't be free because you cannot do what you're supposed to do earlier because you are actually telling him that you did not do nothing 
and they do not forgive that money for you. You will have to take the money back. So when you go to the bank, you say, okay, yes, I have to have to be forgiven. They will ask you all of this. When did you spend each dime, each penny of that money? You have to tell them when you spend the money and what you spend the money for. Basically, everybody has to know that. And you don't tell them, oh, you know I can send you all the all the paper and take a, a bunch of a bunch of uh, you know, receipt and go at them. Let them be the person to actually take the receipt to actually look at when you when you pay money. You have to be able to tell them any any time how much money was spent and what was it spent for. And that's the reason why, because it actually helped them to see that oh yes, the person the person uh, use all the money because you have an explicable table that shows them how much was used every single day during the eight week period or during the uh, twenty four week period. So that's the thing I'm here. We have to actually trace our expense. If you have used the money already, what you have to do is to remember. Of course, you didn't use the money to pay to pay for the new fund. Okay, if you use the money to, to purchase a new fund, put that new fund expense into your payment. So account or account for your own payment and use use that money that let's say you use a five thousand yeah. five hundred dollars to, to yeah. purchase a new fund. Do not come here and say, Oh, you know what? You need to account for the five hundred dollar fund. No. You cannot account for that because it's not eligible. If you account for that, there is suppose that the 500 is not forgivable and you have to pay the 500 back. But if you say that I pay myself 500 dollars, yes, it's eligible. Then you can use the 500 dollars to purchase a fund. That's a good thing. So that's the point I have to make here. And that's the reason why my team and I, we came up with this, uh, with this process. So to make it practical, I'm gonna want someone who is in the PPP already to give me uh, how much he received the PPP, and we will practice that here in front of you to for you to see how much is increasing as you are using. You see how much is forgivable, how much is left. For example, look at this one. This person he has one dollar that is not forgivable because. It was not allocated to the right thing. But the money is gone. The money received is gone. But he still has one dollar here. That that's actually will become a loan. <laughs> right? Because he didn't spend this one dollar on something that was allocated. But the money is over. I don't know if you, you get my point. Do not just go that oh, I don't have no money here. I spent the money. Just put it to the company. You have to be, you can show how you use the money. That shows that the money was actually used for those. If you know you use the money for your personal put all of them into your payment. Tell them I pay myself this amount, this amount, this amount. And then you will do it. Even though you use the money to go to, to purchase other you want to purchase. And that was not one of these about here. Do not say this here because there will be a way to put that effect here. If you spend the money into doing something else, you have to categorize money into something that is allocatable, that is eligible. So here, I need someone oh, to, give me, regular. to tell me how much was this money. So, um, who am I going to pick? I'm going to pick uh, ah, maybe, maybe, maybe Musa. Musa, let's pick you. Musa, how much was the money you received? Musa. I miss hanging out with friends. I miss going to non essential places. Hello? Yes. How much did you receive for the PPP? All I've ever company has been. 6,047. How much? 6,047. It's been a little hard to stay okay. motivated during this. I'm going to stay home until the program is going to save people's lives. I guess I'll have to make that second. 6,747. 6,747. 6,747. 
I used to think that garbage television was stupid. Here. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Oh, wait, on this my front, I'm like, I missed it. But as I started watching what? more garbage, I realized that I've already been fascinated okay, okay. and enjoyed watching right garbage content for years. Have you seen the videos so the I made? I've seen this like two years ago that I used to pay your set. I love watching crazy people talk for hours. I'm taking the same people, give them a character and a budget, and you have a brand new show on TLC. What's that? I that money for anything that was the most you are you not here, bro. Well, here. You're not here. And that's what school starts to be teaching. No, the video isn't sponsored by TLC. But if they wanted to sponsor me, I'd say no. I just want to be on an episode of My Strange Day. There are too much noise. I don't know where the noise is now. Yeah, there are too much noise. Too much noise. Let me see. Okay, if somebody wants to talk, he will admit himself and talk. So I was saying that out of this money that you receive, six thousand seven hundred forty-seven, the maximum you can use to pay yourself is this amount. The table will tell you everything. The non-payroll cost is this amount. That means if anything that you will spend. You have to split them into this amount if it's not the payment for yourself. It means what? The yearly, it means your yearly net income was more or less this amount here. This is why we calculated. So the payroll cost, the payroll cost of this amount, your payroll cost is actually uh, 581. So basically, what you're going to do, what you're going to do is what? We're going to calculate uh, how much money you will use. Let's say you are a self employer. I'm going to the base that you are a self employer. If you are a self employer, you have no employees. The money you will use here will be this amount here. Uh, six thousand. Because how do they calculate? How how do they came up with uh, with this with this amount here? Okay, of course, yeah. <laughs> okay, net income. You have to you have to recalculate your net income here. Give me one second to figure out this net income here. Yeah, what we can see here, what we have here, let me open this room again. Okay, what do we have here? Musa, are you still watching? Yes, I guess you're watching. So basically over here, over here, with this loan amount that you receive, this table is telling you uh, how much you can pay yourself for. You can pay yourself uh, for up to 400, 4,000, Sixty dollars. Then you can use non-payroll cost, which is actually what we listed down here. And now, what can you pay yourself for? You have the average, the average, the average payment, the average payroll cost is this amount here. This is the average payroll cost that you have here. It means basically every month you are paying yourself this amount because your yearly net income was over here this amount so it, it tells it tells you that your weekly payroll cost will be 623 dollars so you have to pay yourself so the payroll cost in your in your money you receive should be up to 628 dollars that you're gonna have to spend every week if i come here over here, let me go to this sheet here, okay? And we do the same thing basically here. The loan amount. What was the loan amount? The loan amount here was, uh, you say, 5,000, 5,000, and 6,000, 6,747. 6,747. This is the loan amount you receive, you see? It's, it's telling you your actually your owner compensation right away. So you have to deduce $628 every single week. 
to pay yourself. That's your honor compensation. What do you do here? You put the date. When was the date that you received the money? Do you remember when you received the money? The date? Let's say. Let's say Hello? Yes. Hello, I got money. I'll let check on my, on my best statement. Okay. Let's say you receive the money on May. Let's say on let's say May uh, 21, 2020. What what is happening? The system is actually showing you every single week the eight week period that you have. So it shows you here every week that what you have to use. And the honor compensation here is what is basically this amount here that you receive. So every week, how, how much do you pay yourself? You come here week one, you pay yourself $623. The next week, you do, you do, you do the same thing, $628. Even though it's passed already because you didn't receive the money today, you received the money a couple of weeks ago, maybe months ago. Just go to each week, account for the money that you receive, 623. Put the money here for each week. Six two three. Six two three. Six two three. Six two three. Okay. Six two three. Okay. How much is it? It's it's giving you four hundred four thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars. Yes. Now for the mortgage. You, 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 have, you have the place of the business. Uh, the first week, let's say the first week you received the money, it was on the 21st. Okay, you didn't pay the money on that day because it's not the end of the month. Now, on the second week, 28, you still didn't pay mortgage interest because you pay at the end, you pay after the end of the month. On, on June 6, June 4, yes, that is when we actually pay for rents. How much did you pay for rents? for that period, right? If your rent, your office, your rent office, let's, how much is your, how much is your, is your shop? How much you pay for your rent in the shop, Musa? Hey. Yeah, I pay, I pay 2,500. 2,500? Yeah. 2,500. That's why you pay every month on your shop. It means that, the portion of the money, the portion of the money that was uh, allocatable to the non-expense is actually totally used because over here, if you take five thousand dollars and you add two thousand to it, two thousand seven. Oh yeah, maybe we still have something left. We still have something left. Okay, let's just pass it here. And when you receive the money. Um, do you have you pay electricity on, on, on the on, on the on your on your shop, right? No. You don't pay electricity. You don't you don't pay nothing else on, on the shop. No, no. Everything put in the rent. Everything put in the rent. Do you pay internet on the shop? Yes, I pay internet on the shop. Okay. How much do you pay internet? I pay two twenty every month. 220 every month. Let's go to yeah. let's remove let's remove all of this because you don't pay you don't pay electricity, you don't pay gas. It's included. Let's remove this uh this credit card debt. Let's remove it. Let's take a let's talk about what is really uh, easy to see. The internet. The internet here, you pay how much? 250? 220. 220? Yeah. Okay, I'm assuming that if you, let's say you pay that money, the week that starts on June 4, I'm just assuming it because it's not even a right date here. You're going to use the right date when you get this, this spreadsheet, okay? Yeah. yeah. Let's say you pay your, your internet on, on the month of June, the week of June 4. You pay so right? Yeah. You get to 15. And then, the second week didn't pay for it, and then on on the week twelve here, week and week of the July July second, you also pay another two fifty. You see, yeah. it's still within the period. That means let's remove the wire here because you didn't pay wire, right? Let's remove the transportation. You didn't pay for transportation. 
Over here, the total expense. The total expense here is a $7,984. That is actually what you spend for what we put here. We only account for your owner compensation. We account for your rents. This is mortgage interest. It's also rents, right? If you have yeah. a rent, you can just change here and put rent instead. Oh, what's going on here? This computer is frozen. I don't see you. You don't see me, right? No, I don't see you. Oh, what? I think the computer is frozen. I only hear you. I only hear you, but I can't see you. Where did you hear what? I think the computer, I'm having an issue with the computer. It's frozen. It's freezing. Okay, I think it's back. Okay. Can you see me? No, I can't see no, you. I can no. hear you. Can, can you see the screen? Can you see the screen I'm sharing? No, I don't see it, but I only hear you. Okay. Uh, can can anybody anybody else see my screen? Hello? I'm here. I don't see I don't I don't see the screen share. No, I'm talking about other people. I don't know if other people can see my screen or can see me. Uh, Alfred, uh, uh, Jean Bernard, uh, uh, whoever is there, Innocent, can you see? Can you see me? Can you guys still actually still see me? Can everybody hear me here? I don't know what's going on here. Can you guys hear me or see me? For me, I can hear you clear, but I don't see it. That's the problem. Um, can you guys unmute yourself and let me know if you can see me? Let me stop I don't know. I really don't know what's happening here. I try to refresh your computer in one more time. Put it back on. Let's see. So I can hear you, but I don't see. I don't think I'm other person here. Either. I want to know. I, I still have so many people connected. I want to know if the other people can see me, can actually see me. I don't think they, they can hear you either because you're talking and nobody is figuring. I don't know. But why? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think everything is not right now. Uh, yes, what we're going to do here, I was I was telling you guys about that. Uh, so far, your loan amount, your loan, sorry, your loan amount is uh, six thousand seven hundred. Your owner compensation most weekly is six hundred. That means, so far over here, you paid yourself four hundred. 4,900, right? So, so far, so far over here, you paid yourself 500, uh, 5,900. But you pay your, you, you spend, you spend like almost 8,000 here. The point I'm going to make is very important. You spend 8,000 and the money they gave you was only 6,000. 
someone will think that oh okay automatically automatically this money um is forgivable because i already spent how much it only give me right i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to uh, who is who is not mute yet uh, Okay, bonjour, Princess, Princess Banjoun. Bonjour, Tonton Russell. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm late. No, it's okay. You're still, you're still, you're still in, the, in the meeting. So, basically, uh, someone, there's noise coming from, from somewhere. I'm trying to meet other people. If somebody wants to talk, you just unmute yourself and talk. Let me see where we want Okay, so I was saying that over here, a lot of people will receive the money, uh, but they will not know that's what to do to make the money forgivable. And the money, they will be surprised that they will, we will tell them that you owe me, okay, you receive $2,000 or $5,000, and then the monthly payment will be this amount. They'll be like, yes, I, I, I want you to be forgivable. It's not with the mouth that you tell that you tell us that you have to show that any type of documentation that yes, I spend the money to do what you tell me you told me to do. Yes, this is what and you chart those you chart those expenses for the, the, the loan officer because it goes through the bank. You will see the PPP through the bank, not through the government, not through the SBA. You will see money through the bank. So it's also be, be the bank to actually review your forgiveness and say yes i see that you spend the music you finish the money and you spend the money on things that are eligible to be forgivable over here this specific case this person here has seven thousand dollars seven thousand nine hundred eighty four but let's go and check if this money will actually going to be forgivable or not or i have to say here that your percentage of 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 uh, the home business of your home use of your house is one because it's actually your home address it's actually your your business address it's not your home i mean your business address if you are using your home then you will put a percentage here let's say your business uh, your you using your house maybe you're using one two two fourth or, or one third of your house for your business then this will be one third over here right one third one third percent of your house will be what you think you should use for your business or you can say 20 percent 20 percent of your house is used for your business 20 percent is also zero because zero times what zero times two you do whatever you want to do here it's up to you if you think that you use half of your house for your business then you can put 0 0.5 here Everything there is up to you, but over here is going to be one because your house is not even your house. The person we are using here as a separate, as a separate office, separate office from you, from his house. That's the reason why we accounted for rents over here. It's not mortgage; it's rents. So we accounted for rent because he pays 22,500 every month. We can even account for this portion too. Let's say over here, okay, can you guys see the screen? I, I'm assuming yes. So over here, let's say that this person also paid another rent here. Another rent on which month? He paid on the 6th, and then he also pay on uh, July 2nd. Another 2,500 for rent. Look at how much he spent. He already spent 10,000, right? Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes, Musa, can you see? Yeah, I can see. But well, can you send the, the average on my way for? My phone about to die, man. What happened? Oh, sorry, please. My phone is running out of uh, current. Can you send an app on my wife phone so I can, I can connect it to you quick? Okay, send me the text message on WhatsApp. 
Ok, on s'est entraîné. Send me a few messages on WhatsApp so I can send you the link. Okay, the link right, right now. The... Yeah, do it now. Uh, okay, I'm going to continue. Even though uh, he, is, he is going to change the phone, right? I'm going to continue. And over here, he spent already 10,000. He spent 10,000. Um, but how much of this money is forgivable? Let's go down to this spreadsheet here. You have two spreadsheet over here. You account basically blindly. You just put your expenses here. If you pay for electricity, just put the amount here. How much you pay for electricity? You put the amount here: twenty, twenty-two thousand or two hundred fifty dollars every month. Just, and when did you pay for your gas? When did you pay for your for your internet over here? If you pay for your phone, let's say you pay for internet this month, then the second week you pay for your maybe cable, right? The cable is separate from your internet. And then the next week you pay for your uh, maybe a fund bill. The fund bill is different for your internet because you have two different companies. Whenever you spend the money for, just put the money inside. I see somebody here asking to get into, into the thing. Okay. Oh. Okay, if you're not going to be able to do it. Uh, yes, give me one second. Uh, I don't even know where I was. Where's the, where's the link to connect? Oh, yeah. The screen is shared, so I just have to go back to where I was working on. Okay, yes. This is where I was working. So, uh, basically, we need to go here to see how much is forgivable. How much is forgivable here will be, uh, this is what will be forgivable. Okay, we spent $4,989 for, um, you know, for to pay himself. What else did you spend to pay himself? We spent uh, mortgage interest on the week three. We could spend 2500 for mortgage interest. Let's go here and go to mortgage or rents. This one, mortgage or rents. It was this week. On this week, on this week, Somebody is asking to get into inside the meeting. Okay, you can see that on this week here, this person paid uh, on week week three, he paid two thousand five hundred. On week seven, he paid two thousand another two thousand five hundred. Right at the end. How much did you spend? I mean, I forget. On this other week here, the same week, he also spent uh, $250 on, on cable or internet. Over here, he also spent $250 on cable. This is the, the week seven, right? So at the end of the eight week period here, eight week period, how much did the person spend? The person spent $500 on internet, cable, and phone, right? The person spent Five thousand on what? On mortgage interest after the after the eight week period, the person also spent four thousand here on what? On his on on owner compensation. So how much did he spend in total? He spent ten thousand dollars in total. But how much is forgivable? Let's go here and check. This is the maximum forgiveness amount the person will receive. 
you see the point I'm trying to make here? He spent, like, for the eight week periods, period, we had, he spent uh, 10,000 already. Of course, because he also had money into his bank account before they put the money inside. What will happen here? What will happen is that they will only consider what you put here and what is within the range. You account for everything here, but you will only be eligible for $76. You know why? Because, yes, he used 25% of his money. This is 25% basically of the money uh, that he received. This is 25% of the money he received. This is 75%. This is 25%. So he never, he didn't use up to 75% on the payment of himself. That's the reason why we still have something left. But he used the whole 25%, right? You're supposed to use uh, on maximum for non payable costs up to 1687 if you use if you count for all the non payable costs and we see that you have spent up to 1688 then you're good this portion will be forgiven completely that's the reason why you see here non payable costs non payable costs forgiveness reduction is zero why because he spent up to $1,687 on non payable costs. And we can see here that it's, it's far more than $1,600 because the, the rent only is this amount, right? Only the rent is already more than that. All of these are almost more than that. So, but on the, on the uh, payroll uh, area, he didn't use the whole $75 to pay himself on the payroll cost. That's the reason why we still have payroll cost forgiveness reduction. That means he didn't account for it, right? He didn't account for it, but he put everything uh -huh. here. So what's, what's happening here? Give me one second. I'm going to put him back inside the, um, the uh, I'm talking about Musa, the person who has this case. This, this is a case study. Uh, I need to add him uh, in the meeting. He, he gave me a new number to add him uh, to the meeting from that new number. I guess Musa is back to the meeting. Uh, it's not even, anyway, we connect from a different form. So basically what I was saying here is that you have to input all your information inside this table to know exactly how much you will be forgivable and how much you will not, not be forgivable. Now, what I'm going to do with Musa here is to move him, move him uh, to go to the eight weeks period, to the 24 weeks period, stop, uh, sorry, 24 weeks period, right? Yeah, because the, the program initially was uh, eight week period. Now we extended the eight week period because we saw that when you apply the formula, the formula here to have people claiming their income after after uh, after eight week, some people were not able to claim all the hundred percent, all the hundred percent of all the hundred percent of their forgiveness. So next week we are going to develop in case we have to move from the eight week period to the twenty four week period. On the twenty four week period. He has more room to claim more expenses. I mean, more payroll. Because the point here is to claim all your payroll. Because your expenses, it will be easy for you. The more weeks you have, the more expense you can claim on the non-payroll side, right? So, but they give you a specific percentage to claim your payroll compensation. If during the first period, you're not able to claim the 100%, of the payroll amount that is allocated to you, then you have to move from the eight week period to the 24 week period. But I'm advising everyone to use the eight week because it's easier. Look, this is only eight week here. The 24 week period that we are going to uh, develop next week, 
we actually go to 24. Look, this is week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, week eight, week, week eight. You have to go week nine, week 10, up to week 24. That is more work to you. So I'm advising everyone to use this. The, the first formula, that was 20, 75 and 25. So use a 75, 25. If you see that you didn't claim all your payroll expense, because most likely you will claim all the non-payroll expense, because there are a lot, right? You pay rent, you pay electricity, you pay, you know, phone bill, you pay internet, yes. Most likely, you see over here, we spend more than 3,000, more than almost 5,000 on the non-payroll cost, but it only has how much? 1,600, that means he will always spend a lot of money on non-payroll costs. I mean, non-payroll costs, that is uh, that are allocatable, that's are allowable. But the payroll costs, that is where you have to focus if you see that you didn't spend everything. So I just put all, I just plug all the numbers here. I plug all the numbers here, but it, 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 it ends up that we, we still have $76, that is not forgivable. If he wants to go with that, it's okay. Then we will apply the forgiveness knowing that $76 will not be forgivable. That means he will actually owe $76. And when you show this to your loan officer, he actually knows because he can see every single step along the way, right? To facilitate the thing. If you don't show him everything, you don't show nothing, then he will assume that 100% of the money it's not forgivable. Then you will owe this money right here. Do you want to owe 6,700 or do you want to owe, let's say you want to keep the seven, the eight week period. Do you want to owe 6,700 or do you want to owe only $76? Of course, this will start will be much better because you are telling him what you have done with the money and he can see everything here, right? That's what the loan officer wants. The loan is not working for you. To start thinking about how much you spend the money, how you know you're not thinking about it. We have millions of people who use the money. And among them, maybe millions will need the money to be forgivable, right? So they will not start thinking about, okay, can you explain me how you use the money? Say yes. Oh, I spent all the money on my payroll cost. Oh, I spent all the money on rent, whatever it is. It doesn't go like that. So if you don't have any specific details like this, make sure. Be guaranteed that they will you will be surprised that they send you the mail or email thing that you owe this amount of money. And you'll be surprised. So that's the only condition. To me, it's not a difficult condition. If you give me, you know, a car, give me an SUV car and say, oh, use this SUV car to take your kid to school. Use this SUV car to go to, to, go to work. The, the thing you're supposed to do, right? Right. Because you, even though you don't receive this money, you still have to pay yourself. You pay yourself because when you are using the money, you spend the money. That means you are paying yourself with your own money. You will still have to pay for your rent. You will still have to pay for your rent. For your money. You will still have to pay for everything. Just I'll give you the car, say, use the car for this one. And, and tell me that you have used it for it. That's it. And, and the car is free for you. If you don't use it like that, then I will sell you the car. You have to give me my car back or pay the money that I spent to pay the car. That is basically what's happening here. They just want you to show them. The, the, the government put the money there and to help people, but they just want you and uh, just type of you know accountability of what you have done with the money. They don't want you to come and sit in front of them and say yes and, and get an interview with them to let them know that yes, you effectively use the money for what they've done. They, have, they don't want to do that. They, 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 they work with the paper. Remember, you didn't talk to someone. To have the money, right? We didn't even have an interview with no one to get the money. So if we want the same way, if we just submit all this information to tell them this is what I've done with the money, that's it. But if you don't submit nothing, let's say we have you receive the money without actually me or you yourself actually do the process online. No. Did you talk to someone? No. So this is the only thing that we want you guys to do to show them how you spend the money. And the simple thing is here. This table right here tells you exactly how much you spend the money. But this table itself, this page doesn't show you how much will be forgivable. 
right? When you plug the information here, the table, that's why I've been giving to, my, to my, all my clients because I have friends who is the money in the month of May. When you see the money in May, it means what? On June or mid June, you finish with the money. So, this is what my clients have been using to, to actually track their forgiveness and know exactly how much will be forgivable or whether or not if there is something that will be forgiven. If you took the money, you didn't use the money, then 100% will be alone because you didn't account somewhere that you used the money. The money, as I said in the beginning, you have to say that you use the money for this thing and you have to record them sometimes. Some company even hire, start a new accounting system. That means it create a new accounting system only for to account for all these expenses. I'm talking about company receive $50,000, $100,000, $500,000. They're not going to just stay there and go tell the government that they use the money for business. No, they create a new set of accounts because they have so many invoices that comes every day. So we have to actually create a new set of bookkeeping for them to account for specifically the PPP money because they want the money to be free. And if you are a self-employer or you only have one or two employee, employees, it's even easier for you, right? So um, I don't know if you guys, if somebody has a question um, from everything that you have explained to so far. If someone has a question, he can just unmute himself and start talking. I don't know if Alfred still stay inside. Uh, Alfred, do you have a question? Sure, 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 sure. And yeah. I said, I want just to know what about those, you know, uh, uh, what about those who uh, get the PPP after they get unemployment? Because, Me you know, the, unemployment. The, I can hear you, Alfred. Yeah. yeah. You know that before some people receive the PPP loan, yes. they already have they already have an, uh, an unemployment assistance. Yes. So, how do you combine those to justify that uh, uh, you are not there's no overlapping of money in the same account? Okay. Uh, the thing is that. When, when, uh, when you show your bank account a proof of exit of the PPP money is to justify uh, the PPP money. It's not to justify the unemployment money. They don't, they don't ask, the, they don't even ask if you have unemployment or no. They give you the money because of your self-employment position, because you have a business, or because um yeah because you have a business because you have a schedule c or you have a 1065 in your application because you were eligible to get it and it's a loan that means nobody should pay that money back it's just that they give you an option actually to make that money free for your business right your unemployment is basically for your own personal expense right hello yeah i can hear you yeah, an unemployment is normally for your own personal expense, but the PPP is for your business. If you have a shop that you are still paying every month, you, I mean, with the COVID 19, you still have to pay the rents, your, 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 your warehouse rents, right? Can, can the unemployment you're receiving pay that, that warehouse rents? I don't think so. Hello? It's big enough. Okay, I was saying that if you let's say you have you let's say you have a beauty shop or you have a you have an African market somewhere. I have so many people with so many businesses. If you are receiving an unemployment because you are home, are you still not still paying those expenses? Are you still not paying the internet or the, the office or the supermarket rent? You, if you have a mortgage, you still pay the mortgage on that office, right? Sure. Yes, then the money you receive from the PPP actually helps you to do all of those things. You see the point here? 
Yes. So, so how if uh, if you receive the money, yeah, and invest it in a completely different business? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a great question, right? That's a great question that you have because a lot of people. A lot of people receive the money and do the other thing. That's the reason why I want us to come here and ask questions. For the PPP purpose, for the PPP, remember uh, what you can do, what you have to do is that you link, you link all your uh, incompressible expense. Those are your rent, those are your electricity, those are your phone bill. In, in fact, you link the non-payroll expense to the PPP, right? Because you still have to pay them anyway. Even though you are, you want, you want to use different business, you still have to pay for your for your rents or for your utility, right? Mm -hmm. Do you want to use your own money to pay for utility and then use a portion of the money? Let's say, let's say your investment on a different business. It's uh, two hundred dollars. I'm taking a very simple numbers because I want to match the two hundred dollars to your fund bill. Your fund bill is two hundred dollars, and you want to and you are approved for two hundred dollars. Are you going to use the two hundred dollars that you are approved on a different business and use your own money to pay for your for, for your fund bill? No, you use your own money on the different business because you're gonna use the PPP money to pay your fund bill. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we do. Now you have you have a room to do whatever you want to do with the PPP. That room is seventy five percent of the money that you're supposed to pay yourself. So go there, account for seventy five percent. Use whatever you want to do with the seventy five percent of the money. Now you don't have to justify. Right. You see? Do you see? Do you see how the answer is coming? Okay. Yes. Sorry, there was no place to put there. No problem. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yes. So basically what you do is that 75%, let's say you have 10,000. 75% is 7,500. You can do whatever you want to do with it because you're going to use the money for yourself. Once you pay yourself with the money, then you do go and establish a new business. They don't care because you pay, whenever you pay yourself, when you are working somewhere, and they pay you. Do they tell you what to do with the money they pay you? No. On the PPP, it's a paycheck protection program. Pay yourself with the only money that they give to your business, and then the money that you receive, do whatever you want to do with it. Now, if it's not enough, go to the portion of the non payroll expense. Instead of using your own money, let's say you want to use 10000 for your business. I already told you how to use 75 as uh, 7,500, right? Mm -hmm. You still have 2,500. Okay, anytime you're going to pay for your rent, maybe your rent is 2,500. That's it. <laughs> okay. Instead of using your own money to pay for your rent, use the PPP money to pay for your rent. And then use those twenty thousand dollars to pay to to, to come to, 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 to invest in your the new business, right? You mm -hmm. just need to account to show the to show these details here to say that I was giving the money for the way you send it to me. Yeah, okay. But in fact, you can do whatever you want to do with the money. That's the okay, reason I, got, I, I say that no one should even think about it because whether they give you this, they approve you or no. You still have to incur and pay all these expenses. By the way, you still have to pay those expenses. Whether they approve you or not, you still have to pay for your rents. You still have to pay for your business rents. If you, you are renting a different location, a different property for your business, or even, even if you own the property, you still have to pay mortgage on it. You still have to pay electricity on it. You still have to pay uh, uh, internet, phone bill, all of those. You still have to pay transportation if you don't have a car. You still have to spend money to move from your house to your business, place of business. 
Then if you have employees, normally you still have to show your employees if you didn't fire them. So what about yes? If you didn't get the money, <coughs> you have to go for your employees. Let's say those people who have waste money, the people in waste money. Some people were working inside with some employees, but if there is no place to come in, they were doing that. Uh, with all the people. So they want people inside. So if you don't stay, you know, if I still pay those employees, whereas the people you learn is actually used to help people pay those employees, right? Okay. Yes. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I'm not done yet. Yeah. Uh, just imagine that someone applied for those for that uh, PP, uh, PPP. I got approved until now. I haven't get the money in his bank account when she was approved. So, what what the next step we should? Uh, I mean, if, if somebody if somebody applies and the person yeah. uh, was approved, but you never receive actually receive the money in the bank account. That's why you saying, right? Yes. Yes. If you are approved. The money will actually come to your bank account because when it's approved, it's actually disposed. Just that they might, the, 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 the bank might just need some in order to issue the money. If it's approved, normally you go into the system, you will see that, or maybe they want to sign the loan document. If you are approved, you still have to sign the loan document. That says the loan that document was signed. The loan document was signed. Then you then we can even call. We can call to say, oh, uh, because when you sign the wrong document, it should take a few days. They normally say five to uh, okay. hello. Hello. Uh, it's normally five. It's, Hello? Yes, uh, I swear this is this have any other questions? Hello. Yes, yes. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tata, Tana, tu es en retard. Hello. Tata, Tana, la réunion est finie. I have a question. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, Mister Fred, uh, do you still have something? Other question? No, you mute. You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> I think I got everything. Yeah. You got you got everything? 
Sure. Okay, Musa, Musa, uh, Musa, can you amuse yourself? Hello, Rosa. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Musa, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, this is your case here. This is your case that we are, this is your case study here. Uh, yeah. Or what you put here, because this is what you got to use. Long disbursement control. This control, your long disbursement, the money they give you. Yeah. You receive 6,745 for the PPP. This is a PPP. I have to remind people who just got here that I'm explaining to people how to track and know exactly how much we need. Let me see. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm explaining here to people who receive the PPP or who apply and see what for the PPP to learn to the bank account. What they are talking about. To know exactly how much, how to make the money that they will receive free. Right? The PPP is the money they give it to you as a loan. They give it to you as a loan, but the law, that same law that gives the money as a loan, also say that the, the loan could be <laughs> forgivable, right? So why not make it forgivable, right? But you don't make it forgivable and say, okay, I need it to be forgivable. No, it doesn't work like that. Because the law also tell you how to actually show me what you have done with the money. That is not something difficult to do. Just to track any single penny that you have used on the money and then we tell you how much was forgivable. Just like that. That is like they, I gave you one thousand dollars. Say, go and spend the money. You go and spend the money. You come back. You say, how much? What did you do with the money? You say, I, I've done this. I've done. I say, no. I know what. After the one thousand, only three hundred will be for forgivable. Then you owe me seven hundred dollars. But they also actually tell you where to use the money for. So if you want to use the money for a different thing, you have to ask the person who assists you in getting the money, right? If you just go there and you got the money inside, you just go and use it, you'll be surprised that they will tell you that you owe 100% of the money you receive. Exactly. That, will, that, that is going to be a, a big disappointment. Okay. Right? So basically over here, what I'm doing here is to explain how to make that money free. Making the money free just, you, just means that you use the money you chart the money, you know exactly how much you have to use the money for and how much the money will be for different people. That's basically what we are doing here. I have said that yeah. over here, we're just going to enter the loan amount here. You enter the loan amount here. It will tell you how much you should pay yourself because out of the money, there is a two table, there's a two law, there's a two system. There's a one is 20, 75, 25. That means you spend 75 25% of the money on yourself. <laughs> that means you use the money to pay yourself, right? And you use 25% of the money to pay non-payable compensation. And everything here is the non-payable compensation. Let me mute other people and uh, mute other people uh, where the noise is coming from. So, uh, so basically, from here, from here all the way to the end, all of this are what is called non-payroll compensation, right? Non-payroll compensation. If over here, if you have used whatever amount you use to pay for your rents, pay for your mortgage interest, pay for your debt, the critical debt that you have, well, I forget that one. Look, this is interest on credit card debt. How much you pay for credit card every month? A lot. I talked to someone who said he pay around eighty dollars credit card interest every month. You, how much you pay for electricity and gas? How much you pay for water? How much you pay for internet? All of this money. How much you pay for transportation to go to work? That's why you don't have a car. So those are non-payroll costs, right? And if you use your house for business, that's just a reminder for those. People who can relate. How much if you if you have a separate place of business, then the rent hundred percent of this is 
an inherent expense. But if you don't have a separate place of business, you have your house, you have to say that, okay, I'm using 25% of my house for my business. Because you're on all the documents, your house is your, is your business address. But your house is also your personal place of living. You live there. You use it for personal matter. You live with your children, you watch TV, you do things that are not business related. That means there's a percentage Hello? of usage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What's up? Who is there? Hello. Yes. Hello. Mira, you on the line? We can hear you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Call this me and then I will try to answer her phone. Thank you. Okay. So, so, so basically, uh, if you are using your house for your business. You have to decide. That's you. I'm not in the, the house with you. How much do you think you are using your house for your business? Is it 25%? Is it 30%? If it's 30, you put 30 here. That means every single amount that you put here for rent, the system will account only 30% as a business expense. Right? Look at the difference here. I put 30% here. Let's go to the table and see. You see here? The money here, it changed. It used to be that it was 25, it was put, it was 2500 here because I put 100% over there. Now I put 30%, it only accounts for 75 $750 instead of 2500. I want you to understand this. We still pay 2500 mostly. But the 2,500 monthly doesn't account as a eligible amount in this tracking of the money because he puts 30% as the usage of his house. Let's say I put here 40%. Let's say I use 40% of my house for my business. What will happen? Look, this is how much he paid. You don't check nothing here. And look, look, this is how much he paid here for internet. Look at here, over here. Look at what changed. Now it's what? 1,000. 1,000 is 40% of 2,500, right? And look at, the, look at the internet portion. He pays internet in the house, but he used 30%, right? Of 40% of the internet for his business. That's why the system only accounts for $100 instead of 200 $50, which is actually what he pays. That means, it means what? It means that out of the money you receive, even though you pay 250% for internet, the system, the program doesn't recognize the $250. The program will only account for 100. That's the reason why what you spend here is not what will be forgivable. It's what is trapped here in this other sheet. That is actually how much you be for the level. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So you just put, you just plug all the, all, the, all the data here, whatever you spend, just put, just plug the money in here and the system will do everything for you. If you are using 100% because you have a separate place of business, just put 100 here, that's it. And then when you come back here, you see, you put the 100% 100, 100 of the money you spend because you have split for business. So, uh, does anyone have another question so far? Yeah, uh, Rosa. Yes. Uh, the, the app, this program, how can we get that? <laughs> because I'm trying, to, I'm trying to go ahead and, and do my own uh, uh, yeah. work for this. Yes. Yes. Mm. You, all of you guys, you have uh, go to the go to the uh, go to the go to the group. I'm going to post the link to get it in the group. The group that I created specifically for PPP and yeah. the bathroom. Sorry, I don't know who is this speaking. Yes, I, I guess it's you. Okay, I'm going to post it in the group. Because to get this, you have to you have to actually subscribe 
to get this this uh, this this program here and and download it into your computer or your phone and just try to fit this out according to how you think you use the money right yes this is basically what you guys have to do and yes this is what uh, my customer have been using and i said okay we can do the same thing with the with the other people so okay musa is musa here yes okay musa you left when i was explaining how much you will owe or how much you'll be forgivable for your case and if somebody wants okay you're gonna take a time you we, we, we don't have time you always have more than two hours um, over so over here this is the money that you receive this is the average for uh, payroll cost that you that you get uh this is the maximum amount the payroll limit okay? okay how much you can pay yourself you can pay yourself out of this money here pay yourself I means you with the money for yourself just withdraw the money if you want to you withdraw it you keep it in your pocket or you put it in the different bank account or if you want to, after two days, go put it back in the same account. They just want to see that you are paying yourself, that you remove the money to pay yourself, that the money left to pay yourself. So, and then you have non-payroll costs. The non-payroll costs over here. So when we plug all the numbers that you gave me, it says that you spend uh, up to maybe 10,000. But look at what was forgivable. Your total amount, the total amount on the owner compensation, which is you, is 4,900. How much was the payroll, the limit that you, you, you should use to pay yourself? The limit was what? It was 5,000. That's the reason why you see here, you say the loan forgiveness amount. The loan amount after forgiveness is 70, $76. Why? Because on the non-payroll cost, you spend all the money. You, you, you spend more than what you are even allocated to because that means you use your own money to pay for all some of the non-payroll costs. But yes. the payroll cost for the eight-week period, the eight-week period, when you pay yourself this amount every week, you only spend 4900 When you compare the $5,000, $60, uh, you compare it with the $4,984, that is $76 left. That was not used. You see, payroll cost forgiveness reduction, this amount. So what you're going to do is what? Is to move to the next uh, rules. There are two rules. This first rules was a rules of eight weeks period. And it was 75, 75 and 25. You spend 75% on your payroll and you spend 25 on, on not payroll costs. But when you do that here, you are not able to claim all your payroll costs. That is $76. So what you're going to do, you are going to apply, are going to apply the, the, the second rules, which is 24 weeks periods. And that second rules will actually use a new set. The new rule will be 64. That means you, you have to use 60% of your money, right? 60% of your mo uh, the money to pay yourself, not 75% like here. You will use 60%. You can see it's easy to do, right? Because 60%, uh, this money is already 70%. That means if you use 60%, it's good because 60% is included in 75%, right? Yes, 60% yes. is included in 75%. So you didn't reach, when you, when you account for all the payroll every week, you didn't reach the 75%, this amount. But on the new rules, you will even pass the 60%. That will be good for you. But the only difference is that it's 24 months, week, I mean 24 weeks. That's the reason why I always advise people to start with this one because it's easier to track expenses for four weeks, for eight weeks, than to track them for 24 weeks, right? Yes. So what I'm going to do next week, Musa, I'm going to do implement the same thing for the 24 weeks.
for you to see if you want to go quick to get the whole amount forgivable. Or if you think like Unipog is too much, you know what? I'm just going to uh, do the forgiveness, even though I also receive that it's not too bad. So it's up to you, right? Okay. Yes. And uh, I got a question, right? Yes. All right. What about now? Because my theory is, like, like you said, uh, so the table said, I got 600 and some change a week. But now I'm paying myself more than that. So do I have to reduce it again or what? No, 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 no. It doesn't matter how much you are paying yourself. They are saying that for this specific program, every week, go there and remove something. Remove this money every week. Okay? Oh, okay. Just go there every week. And he moved this amount. Assume that every week you are moving this amount. It doesn't matter how much you pay yourself every because you know what? They didn't want to assume how much you pay yourself now. This calculation comes from last year, from 2019. Because some people will just, I mean, we just see that okay, they don't have no more expenses. They just want to increase their payroll and say, yes, I used all the money to, to pay myself. They have you, you cannot or you if you pay yourself less, it's not good because it's not going to reach out the money. So they are just use the calculation that they use to give you the money. So you have to account for this amount every every week. You you you, you just pull it down and then you see how much is left. If everything is gone of up to 75%. If everything okay. is not up to 75 percent, then you will switch to the 24 weeks period. The 24 weeks will give you more room. That was an extension of the law. It wasn't the, it wasn't the initial law. The law was voted on, on July 8th, I believe. So it was voted to extend this because so many companies were not able to spend 75% on their payroll cost. Why? Because so many uh, employees left the company. If, the, if, the, if some employee left the company, they are not going to be able to reach the 75%. Because they are on they are on the unemployment, they are receiving more money than what you were paying them. So many companies were not able to 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 still spend the seventy five percent because some some business left. And if you don't spend up to that, then you owe the government. That's the reason why they extended to twenty four period. So you're going to see what is more advantage to you. I'm going you going to uh, probably you're going to visit the other one. The other one that you're going to explain. Next week, so next Friday, next Sunday, at the same time, 2 4, 2 20, we are going to develop the 24 week pay because nobody knows until you drop your number in. The number will be one or move to the next one. Okay? Okay, Rusa. Okay. Rusa. Yes. Yeah, I have one more question. Um, yes. Just imagine that uh, you receive the money. And then you know, you are not aware that uh, you're going to use seventy five percent to pay yourself, and then you spend all the money. That take you into account the seventy five percent. Now, how are you going to uh, deal with this? You mean because you spend you yes. spend all the money without taking out the seventy five percent? You spend all the all the money to do what? On expenses. Buy stuff, uh, buying this and that, and uh, okay. you, you, never, you, never, you never take a uh, withdraw money, keep it. So. But in order, in order to use that money, you withdraw the money right? to do whatever you want to do. Huh? In order, in order to do what is not an, an eligible expense. It's breaking, it's breaking. Okay, in order to use that money for what is not an eligible expense, maybe you had to withdraw the money to to purchase goods, right? I can't hear you, it's breaking up. Okay, I'm saying that in order to use the money for non expenses, uh, not eligible expenses. You had mm. to withdraw the money and then use them, right? Uh huh. Yes. Whenever you withdraw, whenever you withdraw the money, just put the date here as if you were paying yourself. 
Be oh, because, okay. you, because you have the room up to 75% to pay yourself. Whenever you pay yourself with the money, use whatever you want to do with the money, it's not a problem. Okay, well, yes, one quick question. Uh, if, if you use that to send the money to someone, is that considered as a withdrawal for yourself or not? No, remember, remember, if, if, you, if you use zero to transfer money to someone, let's say, let's say it's a hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Obviously, if you want to account that as, uh, as the payment of yourself, just withhold the same hundred dollars and account the hundred dollars you have withdrawn as your payment. And then you can go back and put it back in your bank account. Okay. You see the point? The point is that yeah. um, just whatever you have used the money for, if you use for something that is not eligible, allocated money, just withdraw the same money. Because let's say that, of course, before they put the money to your bank account, you have your own money, right? Mm -hmm. You have your own money in your bank account. Yes. So let's say, let's say you remove 3000 to do something that is not allocatable. Just start collecting 3000 from that same bank account and say that is your own payment. Mm -hmm. And keep it somewhere. And then you can put it back in your bank account. They just okay. want to start to pay yourself with the money. And do not, do not say, oh, I, I used $3,000 to purchase a, a, a new iPhone. No, do not say the $3,000 was for, for purchase iPhone. You said that the 3000 was to pay myself because you actually withdraw the money, right? You can actually put it there, then you got the money. If you pay it by transfer, try to create some type of expense, some type of withdrawal from your account to, to the cash. And then you can keep the cash, or later on, you can still put it inside because they know that you're still making business. They know you're still having some type of physical source of income, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not the only money in your bank account, but in order, to have that portion of money forgivable. You have to tell them, hey, this is what I've done with the money. This is what I'm the money, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is basically how you guys have to do. To, otherwise, many people will be surprised and say, oh, that was that was that was this, that was that. No. Russo, Russo, yes. I have yes. a question. Does yes. any time trying to do all those uh, transactions? I said at the beginning, you have eight weeks from the time you receive the money to uh, eight weeks to do what? Eight weeks to account for all the expenses, right? You have eight weeks. After the eight weeks, you have to do you have to do this during the eight week. Or if you don't do during the eight week, after the eight week, you still have to plug all the information in this spreadsheet that will actually tell you how much will be forgivable. That's the point. You have so to maybe know. I was led in the meeting. I Sorry? was led in the meeting, but I want yes. to know when I have all of uh, all evidence for the expense, where should I submit that? Okay. Now, you... now you contact the bank or the person who help you to apply. Some people some people got this money directly from the bank because they have they have a, they have a account with Bank of America or whatever I go. That's the way you get, you, get, you get the money. You have to go back to Bank of America or West Fargo and tell them what's the process. If you receive it- With evidence or just verbally or with evidence of the expense? No, with the evidence of the expense, of course. I said at the beginning, maybe you're gonna... <laughs> somebody <laughs> told you you were late. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry about yeah. that. Man. Somebody told you you were late. You actually have to, there's some type of evidence. That, for the rents, you have to have the evidence of the rents, which is the, the lease or the rent receipt. When you pay for rent, you have the rent receipt, right? When you pay for internet, you have even online, you can download them. When you pay for this, you have all the evidence. There's nothing that you do that you pay that, even though you pay cash. There are some people who pay their fund with cash. Just ask the person from which you pay your please, I need evidence of the payment, right? And okay. whenever you have all of that, any time after the eight-week period, you can now contact the bank 
or contact a CPA like us, the, the people who actually help you, assist you to do it. Okay, I understand. Of course, even though I didn't assist you to do it, to do, I can still assist you now to actually do the forgiveness process. But you don't do the forgiveness process if you don't have this information ready. Because I will not, it's, it's, not, it's not like you find your taxes, you go to your task prepare, you say, you know, put everything you want to put there. No, it doesn't work like that. No, just don't avoid that. It's not like you go to your task prepare, they ask for, they ask for supporting information. And you say, you know what, I don't know what happens. I think, make, put any expense if you want to put over there. No, it doesn't work like that. They're going to just say you owe the money. That's it. Okay. Yes. So what, what other question do we have? If we don't have any other question, maybe we're going to we're going to stop at this point. It's been it's been a very long meeting today. I didn't anticipate to be that long. <laughs> so uh, what I said here is that in the group, I'm going to post the process to subscribe for this spreadsheet that everybody who receives a loan should actually get because. Everything, everything that is going around. Okay, I say over here, whatever you have to do here is simple. When you get this, just put your date. Put the date you will see the here. Once you put the date, let's change it. Let's try to see the loan on this next week on, on May. Or let's say June, June, June 12, 2020. You have everything. It's going to populate all the weeks that you have to uh, trace and on this one we will actually also put all of this over here you see here week one is june 12 exactly what you saw over there it will show all the weeks here on this other page this is the, the table that actually tells you how much will be forgivable according to what you put here so according to what you put here just put blindly just blind put all the information here the system will calculate the amount that goes here and you will see how much money you will be eligible for for forgiveness okay okay yes so in the group i'm going to post there for people to subscribe to get a, to, to get a copy and start plugging the information again again if 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 you uh you plug your information and you see that everything is not available then you have to come back to me. Oh, by the way, we will go through the 24 weeks program next week. You'll be part of our discussion. We'll tell you how to do the formula. This formula is 25 20. The 24 four weeks is uh, 64, right? It's a 64 formula. So if you are, uh, if you see that, oh, I did everything, but I don't have 100% forgivable. I see after I, I, I owe some people, you see, before I change it, somebody was owing one dollar. <laughs> you were not here. After forgiving it was one dollar. So you have to choose. If you go to say, okay, let's not owe one dollar. Or you're going to say, okay, you know what? Let's move to the, for, the 24 weeks so I can see how much I'm going to claim everything. Yes, it's just up to you guys. Okay? So oh. if... <laughs> So if they, we don't have uh, Metapool, c'est bon? Oui, oui, c'est bon. OK. Yes, yes. Oh, so do you guys keep, keep all you guys' questions for the other, uh, for the ELDL? Post your for the ELDL in the group because we took longer than you were actually uh, planning to, to spend. But it was worth it because we had to explain very carefully and with details what this is about and what why we should actually do this. Because you don't do this, you are surprised that they will tell you you owe $6,000, even $500. I see people crying because they have to pay taxes for 600 so if they say you're going to post this, 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 you're going to post this
Let's go there. I'm going to post. I'm going to post uh, the two link. The two link. I went on, on, on YouTube. The two link that was explaining the step to take to make the loan forgiveness. This this is just the the last step. But I actually explained at the beginning of this uh, program. Not today, of course. I mean, a few months ago. The step to take to make the loan forgive for for forgivable. Okay, I'm going to post it in the group that I've created. So if you go to the group, you will be able to see the two first videos, YouTube video that you can watch. By the way, if you go to my Facebook page, you will also see the same video there. I just put them on, on YouTube. But I'm gonna put the YouTube link on my, my on the group that we created so that everyone can go back and watch the step. Uh, it's the same I believe it's a 25, 25 uh, minute video. Uh, yes, so Without further ado, uh, without if there's no more question, I think we're going to uh, put uh, put put everything in here and we're going to at the same time. Uh, the link that you are using, the same link. This is just a reminder. The same link will be used next week. That's why we have, you guys have to know. You should use the same link next week. To connect to, 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 the, to the meeting, they will, it will be the same link. So do not to connect to the video. It's a recurring meeting. That means the, the Zoom is the same, unless I change the platform. Because I, I heard about two different other platforms that we, I, may, I may use for the video. If I adopt the new platform, then there will be a different link. But if I don't adopt the new platform, then we will continue with the same link that you guys have. Okay. Okay. Hi. Uh, you guys have a very wonderful weekend. Okay, man. Same to you. Hi. Okay, man. That was that was a very good meeting today. Okay, hopefully, to next week is the same thing. <laughs> uh, <laughs>